If health is wealth, then the sunnah is a treasure trove you want to bank on. Joining us today is the diet doctor himself, Moody Danawi. Someone who's been on the cover of Men's Health magazine and someone who's a regular on TV morning shows and major radio stations across Australia. He's accompanied the Australian Olympic team to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil for the Olympic Games and he's someone who's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and an undercover maths whiz. He's currently just finished a book on the gems and wisdoms of the Sunnah when it comes to preserving our health and our bodies. Water and sleep, just those two alone, dictate two thirds of how you look and feel. Sleep is paramount, but food is related to sleep because your ability to sleep is based on the hormone melatonin. Because melatonin is what tells your brain it is nighttime, go to sleep. Melatonin is made from serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. As the sun sets, subhanAllah, the body converts serotonin to melatonin and we can sleep. Now, what do we get serotonin from? Food, amino acid rich foods such as tryptophan, yogurt, something the Prophet ﷺ loved. Just like I told the person who's trying to get lean when they ask me, really, what's the best fat burner and I say how much water you're drinking because the amount of water you drink dictates your body's ability to mobilize fat as a fuel source if you have vitamin c you've heard of l-carnitine it's a fat burner l-carnitine exists in the body but you lose it as you get older but the body uses vitamin c to make your carnitine so if you increase your vitamin c intake eat a couple of kiwi fruits a day with mm -hmm. the skin and you'll increase vitamin c and the body will use that vitamin c to make carnitine that's addressing the cause not the symptom in islam we don't believe in band-aid remedies mm -hmm. we address the cause you got a headache no problem take something for your headache but why did you get it Do you hydration, mm -hmm. lack of sleep. Hydration and sleep dictate two thirds of how you look and feel. The quality of sleep is more important than the duration. So how many of us have slept eight hours and woken up time? Many, many of them, because we have a sleep debt. Every mm -hmm. debt has to be paid off. However, if I slept between Dhuhr and Asr, my sleep score would be better than what the evening was. It would be approximately times three or four. So that one hour between Dhuhr and Asr, and this is not a monitor that is preaching Islam or it's made by somebody who is following the Sunnah. No, this is science. Science shows us that one hour of sleep between Dhuhr and Asr is equivalent to three to four hours in the evening. So following a prophetic approach and sleeping after Isha and having that Qayrullah meets the quota quite easily. We've even seen that in Spain, they've actually incorporated this into their actual trade day. So you have yeah. the siesta, so people do not work after the time of Luhur, after the Zenith. They don't. And even the ones that work after Luhur, they, the larger corporations have mm -hmm. created workplaces where they have those sleep bubbles that, they, mm -hmm. that the staff can jump into mm -hmm. because they increase the productivity of their, their mm -hmm. staff. They get more out of their staff when they allow them time to switch off between those hours. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah. So these are all, I guess, really interesting aspects of the sunnah that we can apply in our, in our modern day.